Bible says that the trumpet will so let Jesus take care of the sin problem. It is really a heaven solution, a God solution. That's our emphasis. So we have assurance of salvation. And there is no force on earth that can withstand what God is about to do. Welcome to another edition of Whispering Hope, daily Sabbath school study. And we are here this morning, Thursday morning, and here to help us with our lesson studied today are elders Nehemiah, Joseph, and Elder Glassworth. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a privilege to be here again another time. Good morning, all. We are looking at the topic today, keeping the Sabbath. And the overall theme for the week is the rhythm of rest. So we're going to try to gel those two topics together. But before we do so, we're going to invite Elder Richards to pray for us and Elder Nehemiah to read our memory text. Come on, let, let us pray. Uh, very kind and most heavenly Father. We just want to thank you, Lord, for spare life, for health, for strength, that all our faculties are in place. We want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can feast in your word and that we can study, Lord, and be able to, you know, break down your word so that someone may be able to understand. So we pray that the Holy Spirit be with us. We pray that those who may hear our voice and hear this study, Lord, will be able to jump close to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our um, memory text come from Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, King James Version. And it says, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Gentlemen, let us move right into the topic for this morning. As we look at today's topic, keeping the Sabbath. Elder Richards, can anyone keep the Sabbath? <laughs> I believe that through generation from from the onset of creation that God has placed within somewhere within that time frame, the seven day Sabbath. And, and he did that because, you know, you know, sometimes individuals may say, can God rest? You know, but yes, he was creating. So the work that he was doing was created. And so he took a pause in, uh, from creating and then created the seven day in which he rested. And so likewise, he's asking us to enter into that rest with him. And for us to enter into that rest within, we are acknowledging that God is our creator. We are acknowledging that God is the supreme being. We are acknowledging and obeying God and, and doing likewise with him. And so he asks us to enter into the rest just like he did from the, from the creation. And so through generation, uh, time has also let us know that through generation, every week that the seven day comes around. And when that seven day comes around, it's for us to enter into a rest with God. Now, this rest is not just sleep, but this rest is acknowledging that God is our creator. This rest is, ac is acknowledging that, you know, um, we are giving thanks to our redeemer. This is acknowledging that we actually, you know, respecting and obeying, his, you know, what his, his ordinance that is given unto us. And so in that way, most importantly, we are doing likewise, like God, resting from his, our work. Elder Nehemiah. The question to you is similar to a question I asked yesterday, but it's worded a different way. What should be the atmosphere we create and promote on Sabbath? And there are two scripture, passages of scripture that you could read and you could highlight. The question is, what should the atmosphere? It should be an atmosphere of reverence. A atmosphere of love, a atmosphere of joy and peace and rest, an atmosphere of of just veneering the the very presence of God. And so as Isaiah 58 13 makes it very clear. Let me find that text. It says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath the delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him 
not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So this should be the atmosphere of the Sabbath. First point is, you don't trample on God's Sabbath day, which means you don't do as you want to do, as you like. This is a special day that God made for man to give him praise and honor and recognizing him as the creator of the world. So if I'm doing thine own pleasure, what is your own pleasure? Is that thing that you want to do? Things that make you happy for you, right? Like going to play cricket, your pleasure, going to work, reading some secular book, watching some secular thing on the television. All these are your own pleasures. Going to watch football game, all that is your own pleasure. So you say, don't do that. And call the Sabbath a delight. Let us break that down. When you call a Sabbath a delight, it's, you, you are delighting yourself in the Lord. And you say, so you, you put away your pleasure, but you are calling the Sabbath a delight. The word delight, what does that mean? Delight thyself in the Lord. It means you're giving him glory and honor and, and adoring him. Right? And then it goes on to say, the holy of the Lord, which is referring to the Sabbath, honorable, and shall honor him not doing thine own ways, as I've explained earlier, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So even the words that we speak must be words of encouragement, words that show and make it plain to others around us that God is our creator, our redeemer, our friend, our God, our king. That's what we ought to do on Sabbath. So when it comes to us really recognizing and creating an atmosphere, that's what we should do. That's what the atmosphere should be all about. God, his power, what he has done, and reminding us that he, this day, is a day where we can celebrate that he himself is the creator of all mankind and all things that we see. You say, not calling the Sabbath a delight. Isn't the Sabbath supposed to be a delight? <laughs> no, uh, uh, the, the, the point I'm making, right? Not calling it a delight. That is, it, it, it is the reverse, right? You are not calling it a delight, right? Which means that the delight is talking about is in Christ. The delight shouldn't point upon you, which is not reflecting you. The Sabbath is not reflecting you. The Sabbath is reflecting Christ and your relationship with him. So that is why I said, you delight yourself in the Lord. And, uh, Richards, what does keeping the Sabbath has to do with the rhythm of rest? I'm going to take you down a road, a very interesting road, a road of music. You know, it's, it's very interesting. When we talk about rhythm, the first thing that comes to mind is music, right? And, and we know that mm -hmm. music is spoken in three different languages. It's spoken in rhythm, harmony, and melody. And it's quite interesting that, you know, the first seven letters of the alphabet, it's the, first, it's the notes in music, you know? When you look at when God did the creation, there was a rhythm, rhythmic pattern that took place, you know, uh, you know the days of the week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rest you know musically for those who understand musically that's a rest then it goes on again one two three four five six seven so when you talk about rhythm and rest now that, that that's kind of musical terms right but on the other hand now when we talk about when you put a rhythm and rest when we as human beings we continue every day we continue to do certain things work maybe play work going to school and so our life, has, our life pattern has developed a particular type of rhythm of doing things. And, and so when Sabbath comes around, that rest that God has given to us is a rest where we can find delight. And I know my brother is trying to say, you know, not having a delight, but a delight which, if we're going to put things in context, when Isaiah wrote, you know, his, his passage of scripture, understand that what took place, they were, they were in, in, in the city, what will happen that everybody will wait until that Sabbath moment to go do their business. And so you have merchants that were coming into the city and they were selling their goods and their services. And so when we say not make a delight, it's talking about not doing your own work. 
but doing services for God. So anything that brings glory and honor to God, it's doing service. Anything that draws one closer into having relationship one with the other in love for God, that's the kind of rest that God is talking about. And so the pattern of rhythm and rest is basically we're, we're going to pause for a moment, rest from our daily, uh, daily grind, and so to speak. We're going to rest from that our own personal things, and we're going to get up close and personal to God and worshiping God. Now, some people may say that, you know, it, it, it is not, you know, you can choose any day to worship. But I want to ask a question, right? Does Antigua, and I'm going to use Antigua and Barbara, does Antigua and Barbara celebrate July 4th the same way United States of America celebrates July 4th? Even though each, both place has the same July 4th. But the significance for July 4th in, in, in America is different to that in Antigua. Now, November 1st in Antigua is important to Antigua because that's the independence day. And, and so when God says, you know, remember the seventh day, you can't substitute the seventh day with the first day of the week. You know, so because for the seventh day, that God said, that is my Sabbath day. And so everyone should enter into that rest. In Hebrews chapter 4, it tells us that those who do not enter into the rest do not enter into the rest because of disbelief and unbelief. And so the, the, the pattern of rhythm rest is that when our lives, that rhythm that we continue on a daily grind, when we can pause and rest in, in Christ Jesus. And uh, me, by coming to you, don't run away. <laughs> the, the wise man Solomon said, the rest of a laboring man is sweet. So I, I think when the Sabbath comes around, it has to be the, a delight, especially if you work hard. I, I, yeah. I don't know what area you work in. You're happy with those. If you work in construction, the foreman is just pushing you to get all he can get out of you all week. And <laughs> yes, and then Sabbath comes, it's a time of rest. You, you, you're in agriculture, you do that. Even when you do mental work and you're behind the desk, sometimes the demands are so great, you can't wait for Friday afternoon to come. What important aspect of keeping the Sabbath does Leviticus 19.3 highlights? Family time. Family time. It talks about the mother, honoring your mother, honoring your father. Right? And so it is speaking definitely about family time. When the family can come together at the setting of the sun. I remember when I was growing up and I used to be living close to Seventh-day Adventist people. When the sun is setting, they are in their houses and they start to sing, Holy Sabbath Day of Rest. And, these, and, and some of the songs from the old hymnal. I remember those old, old hymnal songs right, that they used to sing. And so it is a time when the family come together and worship together as a family. And it's talking about, I like the beginning of the lesson. It says the prelude. And if you're still speaking of music term, the prelude mm -hmm. is that little introduction to the song that they're going to sing. The organist will give a prelude. And so the, the family coming together to worship is the prelude. It's setting up the stage for Sabbath morning for the entire family of God now to be in church. So it's talking about the family, the family coming together to worship, corporate worship. And it makes it very clear, honor. God is seen as our mother. He says in the book of Revelation that he have the pups that we suck at his pups, right? He's reflecting as a mother. And he talk about a mother hen who takes care of her chicken, who would guard him under her wings. So we see God here as our mother who protects us who loves us and who is always looking out for our best interest. So family time in Leviticus, family time is important. Uh, 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 is a term that we normally use is that the family who prays together stays together, right? So that's what it's talking about, family time, spending time with the family. So husbands, remember, call the family together because the husband is the bishop of the house. Call the family to worship. Right? Do not be too busy that you cannot bring the family together to worship. Spend time with the family in the word of God. And also, I also want to add to that, that honoring and, and, reverent and respecting parents, you know, it's actually 
uh, somewhat essential, is essential building block um, for stability and health of the society. And, and so if our younger generation are constantly at war with the older generation, then the foundations and the society will be destroyed. And, and so reverence for parents is linked with reverence for the Lord. Submitting to parent authority is, is, is a step of submitting to the divine authority question that coming up is for both of you what has been your own experience with sabbath and the blessing that can come from keeping the sabbath that's the first part of the question both of you you give us give us your experience this morning with sabbath observance and the blessings that come with sabbath observance if you have all right i'll, I'll take the first shot well I became a seventh dentist when I was 13 years old. I declared to my mother, I'm not going to worry with this confirmation business. I tell her the Bible talks about baptism, and I'm, so I didn't bother with that. I didn't work for confirmation. I left the Maryville Church, and I baptized at 13. But what was my experience? You know, when Sabbath afternoon, when Friday afternoon comes, it's a delight. You, you are hyped up because you're going to put away everything. That's in my growing up years. But as I became a man within the church and begin to work, when Sabbath comes around, it's, a, it's the greatest thing for me. I get the best night's sleep on a wet Friday night, number one. I sleep right through the night. Number two, when it is the Sabbath, my mind is relaxed from anything else. I do not think about work i do not think about finances i do not think about anything my mind is focused upon the kind of worship that i want to experience what i want to have and so when i go to church i'm looking forward for a good sabbath lesson study i'm looking forward to hear a good sermon be preached you know inviting my friends to come to church sharing with them who want to come you know and also sabbath lunch man Sabbath lunch is the best thing. Can't leave out Sabbath lunch. <laughs> Sabbath lunch, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> that food, that food seems to have some, some special, it, it's like the man. I think the man was the best thing people have when I, they ever ate when they left Egypt. And they're talking about the warm meat and thing. Sabbath lunch is the best thing ever. You look forward for that. And you look forward for um, AY in the afternoons. Teenagers, are you lonely? Do you need a friend? Take Jesus as your savior. He will keep you to the end. He'll be your guide. Stay by your side. Teenagers, take Jesus today. All those songs. So it builds you up. It, 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 it makes you look forward for what? is going to be presented it relaxes my mind and it makes me feel welcome it makes me feel that i'm in the presence of god what can i do to be improved it is to go out and i love to do that i love to do it and do evangelism i look i i love when i was back home nature walk go across the hills and all that thing there all these invite and that makes sabbath so excited you cannot wait for the next sabbath to come and that's the experience that I have. That's how I hold on to. And that's what I will continue to do. Okay, I'll, I'll take the, the second part of the question with you. Since Elder Richards is not with us at the moment, in what ways could you do more? Make it the sacred time it is supposed to be. Some of us um, have difficulties, um, Elder, especially in this postmodern time where there are all these electronic ga gadgets, gadgets where you can the, the sports is right at your fingertip and you have all these things you can program your device for the news to come in and alert you when there's news when there's score for your favorite team all these are distractions that we have now bombarding us in this postmodern time and pressuring us and sometimes we break the Sabbath, giving heed to their temptations. Well, what I do, if I have to use my electronic device, 
right? Because we're there. Let us be realistic. We're there. There is a mode on your device that you can turn off anything that's coming on. You put your phone or your iPad or whatever you have, you put it on airplane mode. And airplane mode blocks anything coming in. All the notifications, it blocks them out. So if you're using that device, right? Because you might have all your notes on that. I use my iPad whenever I'm doing a sermon. It's my iPad. I have everything on my iPad. But I turn it on to airplane mode so that nothing can come into this trap. All right? These are things that you can do. Stop those things that are coming in and focus because it is distracting. Or uh, you can just totally turn it off and only use it when you want to. You see, we, we, we have left the time when we walk with our Bibles, right? And our hymnals to church. It's, the, it's, it's our phones or our iPads because everything is on the phone. With that, that's our age. But we can cut down on the usage of our devices by going back to the old system, using our Bibles and our, and our hymnals. Or we can, as, as I say, moderate the devices because there are features on the devices that you can stop yourself by being, from being bombarded with any everything coming in. Another thing is that you do not go and search your, 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 your phone or your iPad looking for news. Some of us use the opportunity jumping from place to place, looking for sermons here, looking for sermons there. Or I want to stay home and say, okay, I can, leave, I can get the sermon on my iPad or on my phone, so I need not going to church. But the Bible tells us that we must not forsake the assembling of ourselves with the believers, especially as we see the day of dawning. So, Elder Richards, you want to comment on what has your own experience been about the Sabbath celebration, the Sabbath as a day of blessing? And then, in what ways could we do more to make it sacred? So, I'll give you both questions because Elder Nima had already addressed the two part of the question there. I think for that question, I have to give a testimony. Um, just around 20 years, a little over 20 years ago, I remember um, I started working with a company. And I started a Wednesday and a Friday. Um, I was told that everyone has to be at work tomorrow. And so I, I said to the boss, you know, um, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I do keep the Seventh holy day in the church. And he said, no, 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 Sunday is the day we will all worship. And I said, no, 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 I go according to the Bible. And he said, listen, I don't care what you're doing. Everybody has to show up tomorrow. If you don't show up tomorrow, you're going to get fired Monday. And so that was a challenge for me. And I, I said, okay, to myself, I said, well, this is going to be my Daniel moment. And so, you know, I left that Friday going home. And I was troubled. Honestly, I was troubled. I, I prayed to myself. I'm riding the subway and I'm praying. I got home and, you know, me and my wife spoke about it. And that worship that night, we prayed. You know, and the Sabbath, I got up, went to church, and to be honest, I didn't remember anything about it. I was just focusing on praising God, thanking God for his goodness. And then, you know, the Sunday, you know, and then and by the time the Sunday afternoon was rolling in, I, was, I started thinking about, oh, wow, tomorrow I got to go face this man. Now, you know, anyone who knows living in America, if you don't have a job, you're pretty much, you know, <laughs> it's, it's an awful situation. You know, because you can't run to your neighbor and say, you know, give me some salt or some sugar, like back home, you know. And, and so for me, when I wake up the Monday morning and I, and I prayed again, my wife, we prayed together and I left work and I left with confidence that I believe that, listen, look, I just had my Daniel moment and it's going to work out. So I got to work now and um, I'm there, you know, waiting and time, time for us to go to work. And the boss came over to me and he said, you didn't show up. And Saturday, and I said, well, I told you that it's my Sabbath. It's God's Sabbath, and I have to obey God. And, and so, you know, you know, thanks for the opportunity that, you know, you have given unto me, and I hope and trust in the future that things will work out. And he said to me, you know, I see that you're a man of principle, and I'm going to honor that for you. And it's now 20 years I'm still working with the same company. Not only that I'm working yeah. with the same company, but I do now have um, authoritative position. All you know, right. God has 
bless me. And so I can say to everyone and anyone, when you obey God, God will raise you up. So I'm, I'm thankful for his blessing. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still with the company count, counting. Uh, I have authoritative position. And so I see my Daniel moment, my Joseph moment, where, where things might have looked bleak, but God came through for me because I obeyed him. You know, some people might say it's a coincidence, but I can look back within my life many times where God has blessed me. And that's one of the blessings that I can count, that by keeping, obeying God and keeping the Sabbath day holy, God rewarded me by blessing me. And now, on the other hand, how can we make the Sabbath a delight or, or, or pleasurable for God? I believe that anything that we do that bring honor and glory to the name of God will honor him and will be the right thing. You know, and that may possibly be, you know, visiting the sick, you know, um, going to the hospital, to the nursing home, um, you know, just spending time with individuals. Anything that we, I, we, I can do with another brother or sister and encourages in them, you know, to worship a God and to obey God will bring glory and honor to God's name. And so there are times, true, yes, there are times we miss the mark. There are times, as, as Elder Joseph said, that, you know, conversation may rise up, you know, and we may lose focus, you know, for somewhat and, and have that conversation. But the truth of the matter is that um, most importantly for us to stay in, in concordance with doing God's work is to do, do whatever that brings honor and glory to God's name. The, the system didn't want us to get, that's why you jumped out. <laughs> yeah, to God be the glory. The question, I don't know who's going to take this one, but how, is it, how important is the Sabbath in these closing periods of Earth history or the end time? How important is the Sabbath? <laughs> it is a testing mark for all mankind. Revelation talks about the sealing. And the sealing is the people settling into the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's settling into that God commandments, his 10 commandments are binding upon each and every human being who is on the face of the earth. And smack down in the middle of the commandment is the Sabbath keeping, is the Sabbath. We know that there's a controversy between God and Satan. Satan said he wants to be God. He's going to ascend into the congregation of the Lord. I shall be like the Most High. He wants worship. And so God has ext already established a day of worship. Deuteronomy talks about, uh, tells us about a, a private a convocation. And we know a convocation is the assembling of people together. And then when we go to, go to um, uh, I have it here. When we go to Ezekiel um, 44, 23, it's talking about the prophets and we're going to preach. Hear what God says. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgment. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my assemblies and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. So when it boils down to the end, it is who worship the way God wants it, us to worship, because it's about worship. And worship who, how, and when. Worship God on the seventh day of the week, as he have in his commandment. The other guy says, no, worship on the first of the week. I want to be God. I, too, am looking for worship. But it's, who do you worship? So that's the issue. And that is why most of the time when at seventh day, when these people are talking to people, and it boils down to the Sabbath. They say, why are you coming up with Sabbath? That's the issue. Because of all the commandments, the other nine, everybody, let's say everybody recognizes them. And we want to keep them, even the laws of the land. But when it comes to the Sabbath, oh, you don't have to keep Sabbath. Is that binding upon you? Okay, and it, it, the laws are abrogated. They're not there anymore. But ask them a question. Would you still steal? No, you can't steal. Would you commit adultery? No. But is the Sabbath. So the Sabbath is, that's the main issue. It is how, who, and when you worship. Who do you obey? You are, are you going to obey God or are you going to obey man? Hmm? Peter make it plain. When it comes to matters of religion, we would prefer, not Paul rather, worship God over man. God, do what God asks you to do. 
Amen. 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 Revelation says, Elder Richard, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. What are your thoughts on the Sabbath in these closing times? You know, I think the book Revelation, you know, uh, many people have heard uh, kind of somewhat scared to read Revelation. You know, it's interesting that Revelation is basically a book that calls us back to the true creator calls us back to worship. It's a book about really about worship. And, and Revelation let us know that there are two sides. We know in Genesis that, you know, the story of Cain and Abel represent two sides of people and the two sides of people that will be in the last days in which we now live in. And so Revelation is a call for us to come back to worship, worship with the true God who made heaven and earth and the seas and the fountain thereof. And we can link that scripture and that Revelation back to Exodus and back to Deuteronomy uh, about a seven-day Sabbath. And so when, 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 when God is revealing through his, his prophet or through his servant, John, when he wrote those words, and he said, here are the patience of the saints. Now, John has written a couple of things that, you know, from Revelation 1, when he talks about the churches, and then he talks about the changes message. And now John is at a place in saying to, here are the patience of the saints. Now, I believe that every church, every denomination, uh, somewhat classifies individuals as being saints. And so God is giving us, now, here are the conditions or here are the requirements of a saint. And he says, here are the saints. Here are they that did what? Here are they that keep the commandments. Now, what are the God's commandments? Now, many times when an individual talks about they say God made a new commandment. But Revelation is pointing us back to the Ten Commandments that here are the, saints, the, the patience of the saints that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so here is God is saying that for, though, for you to make it into my kingdom, you must keep my commandment. Everyone from one to ten. You can't skip one. And so here's a question. If you ask someone if they live in a Christian life, what are the things that you do when you're Christian? Now, how do you live your life? They will mention nine. They will tell you that I don't steal. I don't kill. Uh, you know, I don't commit adultery. I, I know that there is a God. You know, I respect my father. And so they will go through the list. And the only one that they will not list most time is the seven-day Sabbath. Because what they will do, they will tell you that the seven-day Sabbath is nailed to the cross. Now, let us understand that um, there are some individuals or some denomination that teaches that in Colossians, where he talks about, let no man judge you on a holy day. You know, I make an example when I said earlier on that Antigua has a July 4th, but it doesn't have the same significance as July 4th in America. You know, Paul was speaking at that moment to... Uh, you know, two types of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. And so the Gentiles were basically coming in to, 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 to the sanctuary. And the Jews were saying, listen, look, if you don't keep this day, which were our Passover, uh, the Ramadan, and all these holidays that they if you don't keep it holy, then you're not considered to be God's children. So Paul was saying, let no man judge you on, a holy, on holidays. So I can't, living in America, I can't tell Americans that they must keep November 1st uh, as a holiday. Because November 1st doesn't have the same significance to Antigua and Barbuda as it has to America, as of July 4th. And so the same thing with the seven-day Sabbath. When it comes to God's Sabbath, God says, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor. Now, if I say to God, well, God, listen, look, I'm going to give you the first day. Then it simply means I'm telling God, listen, God, accept what I'm giving to you. You take whatever I give to you. And because now I am the ruler, you are not the ruler. And so if we're going to acknowledge God as being our supreme beam and our, and our God, then we must accept the seven day of Sabbath. So here are the patients of the saints. There are those who keep the commandment of God, and there are those who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. What would be your one takeaway? If there's one thing that you take away from today's lesson, to each of you, uh, Elder Nehemiah, you first, and then Elder Richard just close us out today. What would be your one takeaway from the lesson today? That God is a serious God. God is a God who does not change. And whatever God says, he means. He says you must obey him. You must keep his Sabbath. And so, you must be obedient to God. That's the takeaway. You must be obedient to God. If you're not obeying God, forget about it. Either obey or disobey. 
If you obey him, do what he says to do. If you disobey him, disobey him and suffer the consequences. My takeaway is that, you know, every one of us can have a Daniel moment. Every one of us should have an experience where we can testify of God's goodness and his blessing. Every one of us should be able to look at within our lives and see how God has carried us, have led us, and has been there for us throughout our lives. I myself can tell you that, yes, I, was, I grew up in a church, and I find myself doing things that are not according to God. But well, thank God that God is a loving God who gives me another chance. And here I am on another chance, and I just want to live my life for Christ. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that those who hear my voice or who are listening to my voice will understand that our God will soon to return. And he's asking us to do one thing. Just accept that gift that he's given unto us, the gift of life. Just accept him. Just, just do what he requires, ask what he ever asked and required of us, and that is to keep his commandments. Be obedient to his word. And if we are obedient to his word, then we will have life. But if we're not obedient to his word, then we will choose that which is not of Christ, and that is death. Well said, I couldn't do any better when uh, these two brothers come on. I just have to absorb the lesson and learn. And I'm sure that you learned as well this morning. So as you go out today, follow God. Follow his command. Be obedient to his will. And let us spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him so that we can from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another fellowship with our Lord and Savior. May God bless you as you go out today, but remember to wear your mask, exercise your social and physical distancing, and always sanitize. COVID is real, and the life you save may be yours or someone you truly love.